the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, guide our thoughts and actions, that we may know the love of God for us, and love God in return. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hi, I'm Deacon David Kiblinger. I'm a Jesuit studying theology at Boston College, and I'm looking forward to my priestly ordination this upcoming June. You will learn a lot more about me through this set of talks, so I won't give you my whole bio up front. But I do want to begin by giving thanks. Thanks most of all to God for this opportunity to do the spiritual exercises. Thanks to the Jesuit Post for inviting me to give this Lenten retreat. And a really special thanks to my longtime friend and editor-in-chief of the Jesuit Post, Tucker Redding. Tucker and I both entered the United States Central and Southern Province of the Jesuits in 2011. It's been a good ride so far, and I look forward to whatever God has in store for us in the future. Finally, thanks to you, wherever you are watching or listening from. Thank you for your generosity and your goodwill in seeking the Lord. It strengthens my vocation, knowing I can make this journey with you. Please pray for me and pray for each other as we go along, and I will hold you in prayer as well. Each of these talks will be a mixture of three elements. I will weave together reflections on aspects of the spiritual exercises, of scripture, and in my personal experience. The thread which ties the whole together is the image of the vine and the branches from the Gospel of John chapter 15. This passage is part of a really long discourse that Jesus gives to his disciples right after he washed their feet at the Last Supper. Jesus packs so many important ideas here that we will need to unpack them slowly and savor them. Each talk will be matched with one verse which will provide a focus for us. The title of this talk is Remain in My Love, taken from verse 9. The whole verse reads, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. This is one of the most fundamental statements of the Christian faith. Jesus loves us. And all we have to do to be fulfilled is to remain in his love. The first exercise in this retreat is to remind ourselves of this basic truth. Now, a little bit about spiritual exercises before we begin this first one. St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits and author of the spiritual exercises, describes what a spiritual exercise is at the very beginning of his book. And this is what he says. Just as taking a walk, traveling on foot, and running are physical exercises, so is the name of spiritual exercises given to any means of preparing and disposing our soul to rid itself of all its disordered affections, and then, after their removal, of seeking and finding God's will in the ordering of our life for the salvation of our soul. Whew, that's a mouthful. But I find the analogy that he makes with physical exercises very helpful. Some of us may do physical exercise to maintain health and prevent diseases. Others may go a little bit further and strive for athletic achievement, like running that four-hour marathon. Similarly, some people need spiritual exercises to get rid of all those negative things which prevent them from living in God's love. Others, like those finely tuned athletes, do spiritual exercises to discern God's will so they can serve more faithfully. Now, staying with this analogy, just as there are all different kinds of physical exercises, so there are all different kinds of spiritual exercises. All different forms of prayer can be considered spiritual exercises. I associate this time of Lent with some very particular devotions, like the Stations of the Cross, and with the practice of fasting or giving something up. 
While it is true that during this retreat, I am encouraging you to do Ignatian contemplative prayer, remember that any type of prayer you do is a spiritual exercise. The important part is to find that way which helps you care for your spiritual health. And what is it that is good for your spiritual health? This brings me to a second point St. Ignatius makes about spiritual exercises. He asserts that what fills and satisfies the soul consists not in knowing much, but in our perceiving and savoring things interiorly. The best spiritual exercise then is the one which allows us to perceive reality in a new way and savor its goodness. It is the exercise which fills us up with comfort, overwhelms us with gratitude, or moves us with great desires of service. Those are the best. Of course, these spiritual fireworks will not happen in every prayer, but I do believe God wants to shower us with grace. If we are faithful to a habit of prayer, we will experience these spiritual nourishments. Recapping just a bit then, in doing spiritual exercises, we are caring for our spiritual health by perceiving our reality and savoring it interiorly. As Christians, we know our reality is that God became human in the person of Jesus Christ. He became human to give us new life and bring us into his eternal kingdom. In our retreat, we will be perceiving and savoring various aspects of this reality. I said earlier, our first exercise is to remind ourselves of the basic truth of God's love for us. Now, you know that remind was not the best word. Rather, we want to perceive and savor interiorly that God loves each and every one of us. I will give you some suggestions for material to pray over that might help you with this exercise. But before I do, I want to put before you a few examples. I usually find it helpful to have models or personal testimonials which will point out a way for me to consider in my own life. The first example is Jesus Christ himself. In our verse, he says, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. I believe Jesus felt profoundly the love of his Father. And I'm convinced he did so through his own very human experiences of prayer. The Gospels record Jesus praying often, at all different times in the day, and especially when he was busiest. He would slip away from the crowds to find time alone with God the Father. I bring this up because Jesus didn't automatically have this felt connection with his Father. He sought it out, and he fostered it. He had to work at it, and gives us a human model to imitate. The next example is Elijah the prophet. He's a a really fascinating figure. He comes in suddenly with no backstory whatsoever and ultimately goes out whisked away to heaven in a chariot of fire. He had great aspirations to turn his people Israel back to worshiping God alone. He showed great faith in God and performed miraculous deeds because of it. And yet he did not inspire mass conversion. His people didn't respond the way he hoped they would. The people hate him and try to kill him. He's tired and fearful, depressed and hopeless as he flees into the desert. He has strength to continue fleeing only because God provides him with food and water and says, keep going. Eventually, he takes shelter in a cave. I bring up Elijah because... I want you to pay attention to what happens when Elijah is in the cave. From the first book of Kings. Then the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will pass by. There was a strong and violent wind rending the mountains and crushing the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. 
After the fire, a light, silent sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. God spoke to Elijah with a, quote, silent sound. What a marvelous, puzzling expression. God's speech is not like human speech. God speaks to the depths of the heart in silent sounds. Elijah knew that when his heart was resonating, it was God drawing close to him. His fear, his anxiety, his hopelessness must have all melted away when he perceived and savored the reality of God so close to him. We know this because Elijah received a mission from God and immediately set himself to the task with renewed vigor. My final example is a bit of personal testimony. I remember clearly the first time I experienced God speaking to my heart in a silent sound. My junior year of college, I was studying abroad in Europe and I did some backpacking the summer after. Since I was traveling alone, I had lots of flexibility about where to go and when. I happened to meet someone who offered to take me to a popular pilgrimage site devoted to Mary. Now, my family is Catholic, and I went to Catholic schools for grade school and high school, but I wouldn't say I had an interior life of prayer at that time. I dutifully went to Mass on Sundays, but that was about it. I still thought, though, that it'd be a cool trip in any case, so I took this person up on his offer. Little did I know that this trip would change my life. We spent a few days at this site, listening to stories of other pilgrims and participating in the various prayers and liturgies that were offered. My Elijah moment happened during Eucharistic Adoration on a Saturday night. A little while into this prayer, I just felt this love washing over me, and I found myself, without prompting, saying to Jesus, Lord, I want to serve you. It felt like the most wholehearted desire I had ever realized. Now, I didn't know it at the time that it would lead to the Jesuits and the priesthood, but I had perceived reality, the reality of God's love, in a brand new way and savored it interiorly. We're not necessarily looking for an Elijah moment with this first exercise. If it happens, well, great. If not, remember that God is the one directing your prayer. What we're hoping for is to perceive God's love for us and savor it as much as possible. I've had very few powerful prayer experiences since that moment. However, I am much better about interpreting my reality through the lens of God's love. The people in my life, the experiences I have, the strength I receive to keep moving forward, all of these are gifts given to me out of God's love. For this first exercise, I invite you to pray with those moments in your own personal history where you have known God's love. Have you had an Elijah moment? This would be a good time to revisit it and savor it even more. Or who are the people in your life that bring you joy? Recall them and give thanks to God for them. What personal gifts do you have that have enabled you to persevere in those tough moments of life? Identify them and praise God for them. I usually find it helpful to use scripture as a jumping off point for prayer, so you might as well. The Psalms are particularly good for savoring God's love. Psalm 103 or Psalm 23 would be my suggestions for this exercise. Let the silent sounds of God resonate in your heart. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.